Good morning. My name is Katie Montgomery Mears, and I am so glad to be with you this morning for our In It Together devotional. Today, I wanted to talk to you about how we react um, when fear is gripping us, when we feel like we are in the middle of the wilderness. We are um, in the midst of a wilderness right now, and we don't really know that there's an expiration date on it. And so I wanted to look at the story of Jesus's temptation and what it looked like for him when he was in the wilderness. I think what so often happens for us is that we try to claim our own power or we try to figure out um, how to move forward by being in control. And this is a situation in which we aren't necessarily in control and we can't do it on our own power. And so I wanted to look at this story of the temptation to see what lessons we might get from Jesus about releasing control. So um, the second temptation of Jesus, you'll remember, is when, um, it, so the first temptation is when Jesus is asked by the devil um, to turn stones into bread. And you know, Jesus has spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, and he is as hungry as can be, uh, and, but he chooses not to. He shows his spiritual strength by overcoming the physical weakness that he was experiencing. So the temptation right after that is that the devil takes him into Jerusalem, up to the pinnacle of the temple, and he says, uh, if you are God, prove it. Jump off of here and the angels that are concerning you will save you. He's actually quoting from the Hebrew scriptures there. But uh, we know this wasn't like a little jump. Uh, the first century historian Josephus tells us that the temple was 120 cubits tall. So that's like an 18 story building. So this was a massive jump that the devil was trying to get Jesus to take. And, and what he was doing there was he was challenging Jesus's identity. He said, if you are the son of God, then you can jump off of here and you will be saved. So what he was doing was he was putting forth a choice to Jesus. Like, do you want to, of your own power, prove to me who you are? Do you want to use your humanness to try to physically jump off of here and be saved? Or um, the choice that Jesus took, which was his identity rest in God. It doesn't rest in proving it to the devil. And he didn't have anything that he had to do to prove that because he knew that his identity was in God. I think so often, um, even though we're not being asked to jump off of the top of a temple, we are being asked in our world to prove our identity, prove our smarts, prove our knowledge, prove the control that we have through our own power, through our role, through our connections. Uh, we are so often clinging to these things that make us feel powerful or make us feel like we know what's going to come next or that we know what steps to take next. Um, and it makes me think about this uh, idea of, and maybe you've heard of this, the South Indian monkey trap. So um, when there are folks in South India that wanted to capture monkeys, what they would do is they would drill a hole in the top of a coconut and they'd put something like a sticky rice pudding in the coconut and the hole is just big enough for a monkey's arm to get through and so what would happen is the monkey would come across this coconut he'd stick his arm in it he'd grab the pudding and he'd make a fist around the rice pudding and then when he went to pull his arm back out he'd find that the hole while it was big enough to let his arm through was not big enough to let a fist out and so he's stuck with this choice. He can either um, let go of the food, of the rice pudding that he has, and he can get his arm out and he can get away to safety, or he can push forward by trying to keep holding on to what he has and, um, and then you know, not be able to get his arm out and be trapped. These coconuts were uh, chained to the ground or chained to a tree. And so what it would happen is they'd try to run away, but he'd be holding his fist in it and he'd end up being stopped and he'd be able to be captured. And so I think that's what we do a lot of times. We put our fist around something. We try to grasp onto something and say, um, you know, like this is what I'm holding onto. This is where I get my power from. This is where my identity is locked up. This is what I know and what I can see in front of me um, as opposed to being able to release our fist and saying okay I'll find food somewhere else um, which is what the monkey should have done for us it's it's releasing all of the things of the world that give us power and looking to God instead of the world for our identity to to looking to God to fulfill us to give us a sense of who we are to knowing that our power rests in God's power it doesn't rest on what we've got our fists so tightly wrapped around it rests in knowing that we are followers of Jesus Christ and that God is good and that we follow God and so 
my challenge to you today is to think about what it is that you have your hand grasped so tightly around that is preventing you from really going anywhere. What it is that you're holding on to in this wilderness that you think gives you power, but is actually draining you, is actually hurting you more. And then try to loosen your grip on whatever that is.